Well, sometimes it is proper to pray against someone. It's popular today among some of the Christian population to talk about loving everyone, accepting them no matter what they do, even if their position is a stated position against God. This position is particularly shown true in the Arab-Israeli debates. What is the truth? Can you pray that God defeats someone and still be following God in your walk with Christ? Well, if you're joining us and going through the books of Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther, today's reading is Nehemiah 4, verses 1 through 8, and I encourage you to read that passage. Well, Nehemiah 4, verses 4 through 6 says this, Hear, O our God, how we are despised. Return their reproach on their own heads and give them up for plunder in a land of captivity. Do not forgive their iniquity and do not let their sin be blotted out before you, for they have demoralized the builders. So we built the wall and the whole wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. Well, Nehemiah prayed that God would judge Sanballat and the others in his group. He used what could be viewed today as a very strong and hateful language in his prayer. Now, why would this be a prayer that even we might consider in our own circumstances, given the right circumstances, of course? First, Sanballat and his group were going against the direct will of God. In Ezra 1, 1 through 4, Cyrus sends a proclamation to fulfill God's word given to Jeremiah that the Jews would return to Jerusalem, Jeremiah 29, 10. Sanballat and his followers were attempting to thwart the will of God. Now, secondly, God had already pronounced judgment on the Persians, and by extension, anyone who had his or her um, role being played in the subjugation of the Jews. Uh, thirdly, God had promised several things to Abraham concerning his descendants, and one of those being that he would bless those who bless them and curse those who curse Israel, Genesis 12.3. And finally, Nehemiah was not taking action himself, but was leaving the judgment to God. Now, we are never to assume that we can act as God's agents in judgment. Um, It doesn't work that way. So it is proper that we pray against someone if they are doing something against God. But then the question comes up, should Christians go to war as an act of righteousness and judgment? And the answer is clearly, it depends. We must discern if the nation's leadership is acting against God. This was certainly the case in the Jewish concentration camps and the death camps in Germany during the Second World War. Interestingly, though, we as a nation did not go to war for that reason. We were supporting Britain through the Lend-Lease program, and when Japan attacked us, Germany was the one that declared war on us. The liberation of the death camps was a result of defeating Germany, not because of the other way around. Praying judgment on a person or people must always be evaluated as what our wants and motives are. God must direct it because they have acted against him, not us acting against them. (music) 